welcome to our devotion this morning. Uh, we are going along in Psalm 30 that we began a couple of days ago. We gave some background that of course came from 1 Chronicles 21 when David uh, took a census of his armies against God's will. And of course there was a punishment that followed and then God relented. And this psalm really came out of that whole uh, calamity. And uh, yesterday we started looking at the actual psalm. We spoke of the three different seasons of prayer that we go through. The season of or, uh, dis, uh, rather orientation, and then disorientation, and then of course the season of reorientation or new orientation. And so in the psalm, David <clears throat> first remembers his initial orientation. He looks back on time, as we so often do. When I felt secure, I said, I'll never be shaken. He was so confident in God's faithful love and care, so convinced that there was justice and order in the universe. He believed nothing bad could happen to him. And there's nothing wrong with being confident in God's faithfulness and goodness. After all, that's surely what we ought to be. That said, <clears throat> I've met many Christians who love to quote Romans 8.28, that God works all things together for good for those who love love him and they do so mostly uh, when everything is working out well in their lives but there's of course the the flip side of that it might lead us to lose empathy for those who, who are really in trouble those who are struggling those who maybe can't say God is good all the time you are actually struggling from day to day uh, just to survive there may be even a tendency for us to attribute whatever they're going through to their own wrongdoing just like job sorry comforters did in job uh, when he faced all the calamities in his life it's their fault they've just made bad bad choices you know i'm happy and content because i've made good decisions good choices i'm favored by god and in a way this is precisely where david found himself uh, as we noted on sunday when we spoke about pride pride comes before a fall if things are going well in your life, never believe it is through your own doing. All good things, as we know, come from heaven above. Another psalm of orientation is Psalm 37, where the psalmist writes, I have never seen the righteous left all alone. I have never seen their children begging for bread. Now, what a confident outlook on, on those who follow God. And it's good to affirm that God takes care of his people. But as we said, there is a danger uh, in seeing someone with their back against the wall and their children going hungry and then thinking, well, you know, they can't, you know, possibly be righteous because God takes care of the righteous. So this person is hungry then they can't be righteous. And that's when you become like the Pharisee in the parable that we looked at last Sunday in Luke 17. We become self-righteous, almost too heavenly minded to be of any earthly good. It's so easy for us to cocoon ourselves in a protective faith bubble that makes you oblivious to the struggles of others and unable to see that God loves them just as he loves you. And sometimes if that happens, we need to be disoriented. We need to kind of get a reality check for God to wake us up to experience, in a sense, what David experiences here so that we can learn to weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice and sometimes the only way we can learn empathy for others is is really to go through some suffering of our own to go through difficulties ourselves we of course uh, we have a course rather uh, called grief share that uh, helps those who've who've lost loved ones and those we found who are most effective in, in being part of that course or running that course are those who've experienced loss themselves. Now, I'm not saying it cannot be otherwise, but having been through loss yourself certainly helps you to identify and empathize with those who are, are grieving far better. The same could go for those who've perhaps lost a job or those who've been betrayed by a partner, those who've experienced uh, rebellious and a wayward child all of these life experiences if we've been through something like that we are e more easily able to identify with them and empathize with them and again I'm, I'm not suggesting that you have to go through every life experience before god can use you absolutely not 
but it certainly does help uh, to have been through certain things in life in order to empathize with those who go through those same things. David testifies to, to just that, uh, his own reality check. He says, but then you hid your presence. I was terrified. I cried out to you, Lord. I begged my Lord for mercy. Lord, listen and have mercy on me. Lord, be my helper. And that's the prayer of disorientation. Those bad things David probably thought his king could never happen to him, finally did. He felt abandoned. He felt let down by God. What did he do wrong? Why did God let this happen? He had believed the righteous were never forsaken and never had to beg. But here he was, all alone, begging. His world was shaken to the core. And then, out of nowhere, okay, God surprises him with grace. I think it was a book by C.S. Lewis, Surprised by Grace. God gave him a future when it seemed like he had no future. So the psalmist, awed and just absolutely amazed by God's mercy, tells his story. Lord, my God, I cried out to you for help and you healed me. You changed my mourning into dancing. You took off my funeral clothes or sackcloth and dressed me up for joy. Now David has a new perspective, doesn't he? A new orientation. And he wants the memory of his journey preserved in prayer. He wants others to join with him, to hear his story of how it was God who rescued him, of how he was on top of the world, and then he fell. He sinned against God. There was this time of disorientation. And then God picked him up and gave him a new beginning, a new orientation. And because he's personally experienced good and evil, he's learned to now rejoice with those who rejoice and to mourn with those who mourn. What amazing insights we can get from this psalm for our own lives. And again, I just encourage you to think of what phase or season are you maybe in right now? Are you in a phase of orientation where God is good and things are going well? Then that's great. You know, it's wonderful. Praise God for that. We're not for one moment uh, wanting you to move into a place where you are disoriented. But sometimes in that place of orientation, when our eyes are taken off the Lord, when we start believing in our own resources, in our own might and power, as David did, God might just take us through a time of disorientation where we feel distant from Him and where we are seeking Him and wanting to draw near to Him again. And through repentance, God relents and God puts us on a new path, a new orientation. And this is the hope that we have, friends, in Christ. God is merciful. We are continually surprised by grace. Let's bow in a moment of prayer. Lord, we just thank you for your word. We just thank you for this amazing psalm. Thank you, Lord, that these different seasons can be part of our prayer life. There are times when we just rejoice and give you thanks and you are so good, Lord. We acknowledge all of that. But there are times, Lord, when we go through disorientation and we just call upon your name and we come before you and ask, Lord God, that you would guide us, that you would reveal our sinfulness to us so that we might uh, move forward and move onto that path of new orientation that you have planned for us. And so bless us, Lord, as we go into this day. And may we continually just think about these things as we walk with you day by day. Bless this day, we pray, and everything that we seek to do for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you all. Have a wonderful day, and we'll catch up with you tomorrow.